May 23rd. This is actually a month later than I want to be, but we have come out of three years of wet springs. So on May 23rd, we're finally able to plant. You're going to see, watch the video go by. You're going to see Martin Till's equipment on this planter. Uh, what do you call the, the rubber wheel at the back, the tail wheel? Just, yeah, that's it right there. And in beans, that is, that's a good setup right there in beans. I like the spader wheel in corn. I like that setup in beans. It all goes through there. It all wiggles through. That rye was about shoulder high. Not quite shoulder high. It goes right through. June 18th. Okay, now when I set this up, folks, I, I need to tell you, that, that field right there is that field right there. So I try to do this in the same field so you get a feel for what I'm seeing as I, as I do this. June 18th, this is way past anthesis. But again, I wanted these beans to get to V2 growth stage. There they are, right there. You see no weeds. And folks, this is a field in Illinois on the, on the black prairie. Look at, that, look at that. Look how aggressive that is. Look at those chevrons. Dr. Silva taught me how to do this. You roll the whole thing down. We are in water hemp heaven here. And there's your beans. I hope you can see that in the back. I hope that's clear enough. Those beans have not been damaged in any way. There's actually a phenomenon going on here. I don't know what it's called. I need to figure it out, have someone tell me, but I do know what the simplistic view of it is. The roller crimper is affecting the apical bud to a point to where it sends a message to the plant that we need to stack nodes. And that's exactly what these soybean plants do. Our nodes are usually two to three inches apart all the way from top to bottom. And on most soybean plants, they're probably six to seven inches apart. Ours are two to three because of this phenomenon. So we are actually having two beneficial things happen here. Again, same field right there, July 19th. This is a field of organic soybeans, the concept of going organic while utilizing cover crops and no tillage excites me. This is a system we need to continue perfecting. 